Father, I want to address some of the criticism by skeptics, uh, and we're going to go through a few. One I've heard is that these individuals are not speaking in tongues. They will say, oh, you know, these we've had these recordings analyzed and linguists have looked at them, and it's actually just a bunch of babble. Your response? So there's a difference between speaking in tongues, which is called glossolalia. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And then people that are possessed who are speaking a language. So speaking a language would be a defined language, one that we know, even if it's one that's fallen out of practical use. Ancient Greek, Latin, for example, you know, if one is speaking Aramaic. Mm -hmm. But again, it would be a language that would be identifiable at some point in human history. But you would have verification that that was, in fact, a language being spoken and not babble made to sound like a language. And I wouldn't just require just that one right. proof, if you will, or mm -hmm. you know, symptom, whatever it might be. So I would still look for other things. For others. But, that, but, but on that point, you, you feel comfortable saying that it's not just babble that yeah. you've witnessed. And that's the notion of an angelic nature. Mm -hmm. So why can a demon speak a language that the person as an individual doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to St. Thomas Aquinas, who said that when God created the angelic world, he gave them infused knowledge. They didn't have to learn anything. They were like downloaded. Right. So, and they still maintain that attribute even after the fall. When it comes to the contorted body postures, the twisting, um, skeptics will say it's just imitation. Um, they're faking it, they're imitating, they're role-playing. What have you seen that you would be able to say, no, that's not imitation, decisively? Yeah, bodily distortions would be things like the arching of the back or the body moving in positions that are really not possible for the human person. And again, this would be an individual that I would have known fairly well going through the process of interviewing them, getting to know more about them. Mm -hmm. So it isn't like they walk in the door and I begin an exorcism. So I will know things about them ahead of time. That goes back to the same way with the use of language. I'm going to know whether or not they know how to speak, you know, ancient Latin, for example. Mm -hmm. But like bodily contortions. Can it be something as extreme as like head spinning completely 360 degrees around? In other words, something like that, you couldn't, as a human, do that and survive. I couldn't make that happen. Is it that extreme? It is. And here's a good example. The doubters might really like this one, too. But during an exorcism, I saw when the demon manifested, the person's jaw dropped and moved off to the side. All the way down off to the side. Just, in a way that would not be humanly possible no, to do. that's not possible for a human to do that. Wow. Do you have any other examples of things that you've seen in the room that that to, to skeptics would be beyond capacity for a mentally ill person, for example, so that there would be no confusion. Anything else other than you mentioned the levitating, obviously, anything else that you would want to share that you've witnessed? I've witnessed when people manifest, they've dropped to the floor and begin to slither like a snake, for example. That would be another one. Mm. But again, all of these contortions, if you will, are just really meant to distort the human body and the human person created in the image and likeness of God. Have you seen any skin changes? Like I had remembered watching a film where they were talking about skin eruptions manifesting or bizarre things like the letters manifest. Have you have you seen things manifest on a body that you know couldn't happen just from life, you know, in that moment? Yeah, when demons manifest, usually the person's complexion changes. How so? You know, if they're Caucasian, you know, you'll see they become grayish in tone. Okay. Because again, it's really meant to present the human person as an animal. Mm -hmm. If you think about the story of creation in the book of Genesis, on the sixth day of creation, what did God create? He created animals and humans. What separates humans from animals? It's our capacity to live for the, the Sabbath, the next day, the Lord's day, to honor and glorify God. Mm -hmm. And so the demons in rejecting God, the reason they are animalistic in nature is there is no recognition of God.
If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here, or you can catch the full episode right here.